now and he's doing well. He's going to college and he's doing well. He went there and he's got a job. And I'm so proud of him. You know what he said, Mum? Because of my skin colour, it's hard out here, Mum. But I said, son, you be proud of yourself. And you're gonna you're gonna get there. You're gonna get there. You with me? And if anyone wants to say something on the mic, you know, we're all about peace. We're all about justice today. We are relaunched today for Black Lives Matter. Okay, come, 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 this, come this way, Molly. What she needs. Okay, here's Willie. She, she's got something to say to you guys. Let's have some respect and give us some. I've got an accent. I've got an African accent. It's a massive guy. Good for you. Woo! I'm from Kenya. I'm from Kenya. What is it that when a white person, a white person, no, no. How can when a white person does a mistake, it can't, they go to the mentor, they are taken to the mentor, yes, but a black person fails. Why? Why? You, you do the same crime, but the black person is persecuted. Why? But the white person, what happens? They go, oh, it's mentally disturbed. They go to a mental hospital. But the black person is what? Jail. straight up, straight up, pow. Why? You know what, as well, going off that, I just want to say this is another issue we see all the time, even in the media. And I've seen it as well. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. My name is Eric. And um, I was the first black engineer in Westminster University. When I went to my job, I worked for Mula. I worked for Mula, yeah. And, um, I was the only black engineer. Black engineer. If you remember me, you ain't get you ain't get nowhere without being black. You mean black, you have to work hard. It's hard. And I got four boys. I got four boys. My daughter is a big medicine in uh, Oxford. Uh, my son is doing uh, engineering in uh, Cambridge. And I bless God because God, it's not easy being black. You know. It's not easy being black, trust me. And you know, people think that, yeah, you know what? If you go to school, you've got to work harder than any other else. You know what I mean? And it's hard. But guess what? Being black is gold. Being black is gold. Being black is gold. Trust me. Listen, the heart we have, the world we have, and we are alive, but we are blessed. God bless you. It was not for black people. It was not for black people in America or in this country. Who are who the cotton? Who pick the cotton? Who pick the fucking cotton? Who pick the fucking cotton? Ask, where were the black white people? What are you doing? Slaving us, slaving us, slaving us. But you know what? The time is coming. The time is coming. You know what? I wouldn't have said we're gonna have to. <laughs> Okay guys, so we're going to have another speaker, remember this is an open mic against racism, so please if you'd like to speak, come and speak to us. And now we're going to have Dan talking. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so I went to the same school as Bernadine. Um, ten years later, and the school was absolutely still filled with the same teachers that were racist, homophobic, and I know it's not about that today, but they were very prejudiced about stuff. And, and today, it absolutely does. And also, that lady from Kenya um, that was speaking earlier, yeah. Um, Black lives matter. Absolutely, every life matters. Orange is the new black, and black is the new gold. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, this is why we're fighting today. As you can see, we're all about unity. We've not just had black speakers today. We've had speakers from all over the place, and this is what we mean when we say Hello. black lives matter. We're not saying that other people's lives don't matter. 
But at the moment, it's not other people's lives what that I'm at risk. At the moment, it's not other people's lives that are being threatened, not only by the government, yes. but by the NHS. Yeah. By people in the streets. In, even now in 2021, lynchings are still happening. In this country also, lynchings. People are still being hated on because they're not white and they're not British. I was born here and I'm still being hated on for not being white. People still look at me. When, when someone mate. looks at me, they don't go, oh, she's English. It's all like there's a black girl. You get stopped. As a black person in this country, I can say, when we're too loud, we're acting ghetto, we're acting big, we're rogue men, we're hood. When we're too quiet, we've got something to hide. It is wrong. Why is it? Why is it when I'm in a reactory, it's an angry black girl? Am I not allowed to be angry? Am I not allowed to be angry? As the way that this people in this country that I was born and bred in have treated me. I'm not allowed to be angry that in my own school the teachers are not Winston Churchill when they don't teach us what Winston Churchill was one of the most racist men out there. But then we're putting them, the God is in a concentration camp. Make it make sense. 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 Mm. About the kings and queens. We're talking yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. <laughs> What about Mary Seacole? Yeah. Florence Nightingale did not do half of the things Mary Seacole did. But I bet exactly no one knows who Mary Seacole is. We have anti racist movements. I bet half of you didn't even know that in St. Anne's, in the, I believe it was the 70s and 80s, there was race riots just 10 minutes down the road from this city centre. Yet no one knows about this. Why? Because in this country, they fail to teach us our history. For me to learn my own history, I have to go off and do it myself. The black children of this country are not taught their own history. In the school, that's supposed to be for everyone. If it's British history, it should not just be white British history. It should be all British history. The fact that in 2021, like we've had a speaker say earlier on, when a white person commits a crime, they're mentally ill. When a black person commits a crime, they're a gangster and a criminal. Again, make it make sense. You can go into a workplace as a black woman. Your hair is too ghetto. Your hair's not right for work. So you're telling me if I go into work with a protective hairstyle, it's not okay. But if someone comes into work with like coloured hair, that's fine because it's not black. And I think as well, one song we should all pay attention to is the song Black by Dave. Because even that taught most people more than the schools in this system taught us. We need change, but we need people to make that change. We need people to speak out. And this is why we're going to keep screaming Black Lives Matter. Because until black lives matter, no lives matter. And it is what it is. When people are trying to say racism doesn't happen, look it up. I'm gonna tell you all another story. When I was 16, my final year of secondary school, I got told for my trousers being too tight. The same trousers that my white sister had. Mine were too tight, hers were fine. So my mum made the idea of going to the newspaper all fine. From me being in that newspaper article, me as a 16 year old child, and you have to remember I'm 20 now, but a 16 year old minor, it's a minor but anyway, as a minor, I was put onto a racist website at the age of 16. 16 years of age, my face was plastered all over a racist website. There was comments on there talking about killing me for my skin colour lynching and I was 16. My mum and my uncle had to deal with that. My mum and my uncle had to make sure that my picture got taken off that. And people say racism still doesn't happen. The other day I was looking on the news. There's a lot of people from Afghanistan now being brought into this country because of the war that Britain have helped instigate. And people have said we don't want them here. Why? We've helped to destroy their country 
and we can't even let people in. People don't realise that immigrants, when they come to this country, they're not entitled to benefit. This idea that people come here to steal our jobs is ridiculous. The reason there's so many jobs in this country is because most people in this country that are on the benefits, they don't want to work. I have friends that will take two or three jobs just to make a basic living wage because if they don't work the 40 hours a week, they're not entitled to these benefits. You could move to this country today from another country, you're not entitled to the benefits, you're not entitled to disability pay, you're not entitled to universal credit, you've got to go and work. Well, your immigrants are the ones stealing our jobs, the jobs that people in this country don't want to do. It's absolutely crazy. The hatred towards people that are not British in this country is absolutely vile. We all need to realise that we need to stand together. It's called the United Kingdom, not us versus them. And people think we have this mentality when we don't. We're just trying to make everyone equal. Is it a crime to want to be treated the same? Is it a crime for me to be able to want to walk down the street and feel safe? It's not a crime. Is it a crime that I can't even walk past the police officer without immediately feeling threatened? It's the fact that a lot of my black friends have had to put shortcuts on their phone so then they can tell Siri that they're being stopped and searched. So it will re record it and send it to a person. We shouldn't have to do that in 2021. We shouldn't. So guys, this is an open mic. We will be here for another like 10, 20 minutes. So if anyone does want to speak, please come up and speak on the mic. Like I'm rumbling. Oh, he's gone now. You go. Okay, we're gonna have another speaker now. Give her a warm welcome. So, um, earlier today, I walked up to a woman, well, two women, and they said that they were tired of hearing about Black Lives Matter. But if you're tired of hearing Black Lives Matter, imagine how tired black people actually are of experiencing racism every single day. And the people that say, oh, all lives matter, and yes, of course they do, but in the past and even recently, it's still happening today, black people are treated as though their life doesn't matter. Hence why we need the reminder that black lives matter. It's not, oh, black people are above everyone else or only black lives matter no it's literally black lives matter as well as every other life but people seem to be forgetting that because well racism still exists so clearly people don't think that black lives should matter but they do Thanks. black lives matter <laughs> dark picture productions market square knots Yeah, I said today, yes, Black Lives Do Matter. And I'm supporting Black Lives Matter. Now, the tap earlier is walking around and said that we're saying why to waste this. We are certainly not. I was born in this country. I'm very rarely gone out of this country. But I've still got respect for others. Now, it's all about respect and education. If you think about it, when we had... Um, when we had no nurses and no bus drivers, we called on the blacks to come over. But then 10 years later, we're asking them to leave again. That is not right. We should be here for them. We brought them in to do, to do our, our work when our people couldn't, and now we want them to leave. No, that's wrong. I've heard people tell that they should leave the country because they, were, they are a different colour. Yet they were born in this country. Yes, their parents came over here to do the menial jobs that people couldn't do after the war. But yet, they were born in this country, so how can they go back to their own country? This is their own country. I repeat, this is their own country. There is no, no division between them and us. They bleed red. Yes, the skin is slightly, slightly different from the book. At the end of the day, they bleed red. The heart pumps the same as ours. The veins put the blood around the same as ours. Yet, there is problems that people are being persecuted just because of a pigment. That is not right. That is so wrong. So if people have said, if people have said to you racist or whatever, if you are racist, then you need to bury your heads in the sand and not talk about. And if you're not and you want support, we're here. 
Happy Fortnite, now. Happy Fortnite. Shush, please. I love you all, and God bless. Thank you, Sean. 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 We used to do weekly, but we're here every other Saturday, so please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's at Not Good United Against Racism. It's written on the banner there. We have leaflet. Please come and join us. We're here every other week, as you say. Come join us. Come protest with us. We're protesting against racism. If you're feeling like there's injustices, please come and join us. Because at the end of the day, until black lives matter, then no lives matter. Because black lives are still at risk every day. The thing is, racism is still a thing. Racism still happens in 2021. So if, if you are not against racism, what, who does that make you as a person? If you're not against racism, what does that make you? Because you can be against racism, you don't have to come and speak on the mic. Give us a follow. Stand up for people. If you see an injustice happening, say something. If you see something bad happening, something of a racial, homophobic, anything, video it. Get the evidence. Because this is the thing. Too many people are keeping quiet, but no more. If you see someone getting hate on the bus, video it. Stop them. Tell the driver. If you see it in your workplace, Tell someone, because the longer people stay silent, the longer ra the more racism wins. How are we supposed to fight racism when too many people won't even say anything? Like I say, we're not saying, come, speak on the mic, come to our protest every week. We're raising awareness. If you see something bad, stop, say something. Because at the end of the day, without people fighting, racism wins. And I cannot exaggerate this enough. We've had some ignorant people today saying that our claims and our stories aren't true. Today I've been called a liar for speaking about my experiences with racism. And that just shows you what kind of people we have to deal with on a daily basis. And like people have said today, if you're sick of hearing Black Lives Matter, how do you think we feel going through it every day? How do you think we feel when our men and women are classed as gangsters, ghetto, road men, our men and women get longer sentences for the same crime as other people. But yeah, people are sick of Black Lives Matter. BLM isn't just a trend. We're not just going to fight racism for a month. We've been doing this now, in this organisation itself, for over a year. Yes, the pandemic stopped us from being out on the streets every week. But we're back now, we're going to be fighting racism, so please come and join us, come and talk to us. Follow our Instagram, follow our socials and keep updated. So at the end of the day, until we all fight racism, racism wins. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Does anyone else want to say anything? Because I don't know, I just feel like I'm on the list. Hi everyone, this is an uh, open mic against racism and imperialism. So, yeah, when we're talking about racism in Britain, it's very important to remember that there's a whole system of prisons that lock people up for a particular crime, and that is the crime of being born in a different country. Just down the road, one of these t-shirts. Yeah? Yeah. Um, Dave's got one, Matt's got one. Oh, yeah. um, the Matt's got £10, it's not on the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, As I say, it's okay. for the only what crime. What size are you? Um, enlarged. Enlarged. Yeah. But they've got a large, so you don't want an extra large. Yeah, I can do, yeah. Yeah, you're doing it, Jay. Hold on a sec. Yeah, what? I'll have the mic, you have that one. Okay. Yeah? Wait, five bit more marble with all detention centres and sports. Yeah, if you stay behind after you're going to talk, when you're going to do the next one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sierra Leone's people from all over the world 
who are trying to make a, a better life for themselves here in Britain. But we have to ask, why is that the case? Why do desperate people from all over the world find themselves forced to come to Britain? And that's because Britain, the wealth of Britain, is currently built by the exploitation of other countries. And this isn't just a historical thing, this wasn't just a thing of the British Empire, this is a thing that happens every day. On the FTSE 100, there's about six companies that make their money from mining. And they're not mining here in Britain. These, are the, these companies are the money behind the mines in the Congo, where you have kids as young as nine, producing cobalt, producing coal pan with their bare hands. These British companies are the money behind the systems of exploitation and extraction in Latin America that destroys whole ecosystems, that destroys whole communities just for the profits of a tiny minority here in Britain and in the other imperialist countries. And that's why racism in Britain is not going away, it's not just a historical shadow, it's being reproduced every day by the system of borders, by the system of nationalism, by the wars that Britain is foisting on people all over the world. A few weeks ago, British forces claimed to be withdrawing from Afghanistan. And Afghanistan shows exactly what British imperialism means for the vast majority of people in the world. Over the last 200 years, Britain has invaded Afghanistan four times. And now, following the withdrawal a few weeks ago, it's one of the poorest countries in the world. The puppet regime, the puppet government set up by the Brits and the Americans, is one of the most corrupt societies on the planet. And the various, um, you know, the puppets and the proxies that the imperialists were working through were guilty of the most heinous, um, heinous crimes, abuse of children. And it's been documented that 90% of casualties from the US drone strikes were civilians. So these are the conditions that Britain has put just on Afghanistan. These are the conditions that people are forced to flee. And this is the system that the deportations in Britain hold up. Britain has been deporting Afghans for years and years and years, claiming it to be a safe country when clearly that is not the case. So that's why we need to organise here in imperialist Britain in one of the bellies of the beast if we want to build a world without imperialism, without racism, without endless war. And the way to do that is to get rid of the tiny minority who benefit from racism, who benefit from imperialism. And that is the ruling class in this country, the money behind the banks, they own all the land, they have all the politicians in their pocket. And that is the system that we have to organise against if we want to smash racism. Cheers.